see Barbie or Oppenheimer this week? <laughs> I knew I was going to get that question. Um, <laughs> I did not, but it heard that it did very well. I knew I was going to get that question. Ah, uh, yes, cringe. Cringe once again being cringeworthy yesterday at the White House briefing. She was asked one question by one reporter from one news organization about Joe and Hunter. And that was, that was that. Happy Tuesday to you and, and welcome. I, uh, you know, I got to tell you, we had this conversation here in the studio over the last few minutes about the women's national soccer team playing in the World Cup in New Zealand and their, uh, I would call it a protest of the national anthem by six of the players on the team. And there was some debate in the studio. Well, maybe some of these young women, I guess one of them is Dennis Rodman's daughter, basketball great and hilarious uh, person. Uh, Dennis Rodman's daughter playing on the U.S. national women's soccer team at the World Cup in New Zealand. I assume Rodman is there. Why wouldn't he be? Uh, But she had her hand on her heart. However, six of the 11 players did not have their hands on their hearts for the national anthem, much less uh, singing along. A couple of them were at least mouthing the lyrics and had their hands on their hearts. And, you know, the question is whether this... Uh, takes the fun out of watching the women and rooting for them to win because for me, I, I've got to say, it does take a lot of the wind out of their sails. It's, hey, I tuned in to root for them, but I, I, I explained that I, I DVR'd the U.S. versus Vietnam match on Sunday, and I didn't watch it live. My best girl and I, we were out and about, came home, turned it on on the DVR, and I watched it at, uh, you know, multiple uh, times at uh, high speed. And then when I saw the score change, I, I stopped it and I went back a minute so I could watch the play. And I watched uh, so I had to do that three times because the U.S. scored three times and the v- Vietnamese didn't score at all. But, you uh, you know, if you look for the Vietnamese team during their national anthem, uh, they were obviously very enthusiastic. They might have a gun to their heads, you know, or their family's heads. Um, but the American team acting all blasé, and yeah, and Megan Rapino complaining, well, I'll be patriotic when we're better, when we live up to my expectations, which of course can never be met because she's a radical. Uh, and, uh, and, and I got to say that uh, U.S. women's national team, some of the players look like they're just great, and they're, hey, I'm proud to be representing my country here at the World Cup in New Zealand. What a great what a great event in my young life. Isn't this wonderful? Uh, and then six of them, the majority of the 11, um, are, and I would, and Michael's uh, saying, well, is it really a protest? They're not putting their hands on their hearts. Maybe they don't know enough to put their hands on their hearts. I mean, if they're representing the U.S. national team, they're overseas. I, I think when the anthem plays, they ought to know at least that much. Dennis Rodman's daughter had her hand on her heart. And, uh, and, uh, obviously four others did as well, but I've got to, uh, I've got to say that it's, um, you know, it's, you want the country to root for you. You should behave in a civil and adult fashion. Um, and if you're going to take steps and commit acts that, you know, will alienate half the country, then I've got to shrug and go do something else, you know, get back to me when you, when you get the trophy, then congratulations. And again, this Megan Rapino person who's on the team and I'm told she uh, started out on the bench, but I'm told she played for much of the second half of the game. Uh, she didn't score any goals, but, um, you know, I want to root for the American team, but you guys shouldn't make it hard. I, I'd like to uh, root for a team or teams in the NBA, but you guys shouldn't make it so hard. You know what I mean? Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and the NFL, Colin Kaepernick and so on. You know, Phil Jackson, the legendary NBA player and coach, recently said that he can't even watch NBA games anymore because they've politicized it so much that he can't stand watching NBA games his whole life 
has been professional basketball, and he can't watch professional basketball anymore because the left, that is to say the Democrat Party, has ruined it by politicizing it. Right? And now you've got to politicize the Women's World Cup, the U.S. national team, and I've got no use for that. And, and again, you politicize uh, Targay, and what do they not politicize? Bud Light? You know, you politicize absolutely everything, and nobody seems to learn the lesson. Just stay out of politics. You're not in politics. Kick the ball. Kick, kick. Put the ball in the net. And uh, leave whatever your crazy politics are out of this. And then NBC News going wild and celebrating a record number of LGBTQIAA uh, people, women, playing in the... Uh, in the World Cup this year, 87 of them. They're very excited about that. I wonder if they take a poll. That is not a double entendre. And, and uh, Megan Rapino, of course, refused to go to the White House four years ago when the U.S. team won the World Cup and cursed and used the F-bomb and uh, things talking about President Trump and then screaming and yelling at a parade and using MF and she's, uh, you know, keeping it classy. Um, you know, if you're a repugnant actor in all of this, I don't think you help your sport. And as a result, I think she should be kicked out. Kick her off that. It's, it's uh, too late now, of course. Um, and she also recently said that she thinks that men should play against women, Megan Rapino. She's one of these, oh, yeah, let's have, if he says he's a woman, that's good enough for Megan Rapino, which is pretty insane given that she's a female athlete, but she is an advocate for men playing in women's sports. And they like to use stupid additions like biological men. Yeah, that's what men are. Just by the way, that's their biological warfare. So we've got that going for us. Now, let's, uh, let's, go, to, uh, let's go to the, uh, the telephones, Michael. As I know, yesterday, uh, a number of people called in and wanted to talk about this, and I wasn't really up to speed on this uh, yesterday. Um, so let's go to uh, uh, t- 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 uh, let's go to Jerry calling from Woodbridge, Virginia. Jerry, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Yay! I'm on the Chris Plant Show. <laughs> to that. Welcome. And with Megan Rappenhoe. Is that how you say Rappen? Rappen. Rappenhoe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just oh no, it's Rapino. Rapino. Oh, Rapino. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Uh, so anyway, she's an influential person on the team because she's been there for a long time. That's right. And I think the courage is with the women who did stand, even though they were in the minority. Anybody can join the majority and and feel you know safe with the majority of the people. But I'm more impressed with the five women who said, I don't care what the majority is doing. I don't care what she's doing as long as she's been here. We're standing. We're putting our hands in our hearts, and we're doing the thing. So I'm I'm there to I'm watching it. I'm going to be supporting those women in in uh, in what they're doing for our country. My daughters played soccer. Uh, I can't watch men run around and fall over when nobody touches them and act like they're hurt. <laughs> That's why I didn't watch basketball for so long. Um, you know, I'm a hockey guy. Put knives on your feet, and clubs in your hands, and go at it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely not watching. Um, I don't even know if you can call it men's soccer. I play soccer, but I always get yellow cards. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I think the courage that the, uh, that the the women who are standing up and are showing, that's who we need to be rooting for. We can't discount them for what they're doing. And, and, and Megan's stance on men who think they're women wanting to play, yeah, she's for it because this is her last year. It wouldn't be implemented till next year anyway, and she wouldn't have to compete against them. So, of course, she's all for it and supporting. Otherwise, they'd, she wouldn't even make the team if, if uh, men were, were dressed up in silly skirts and stuff and running around the field. They should make them wear tutus. Yeah, if, I, uh, uh, yeah watching the Vietnam game uh, the other day, I was thinking uh, in fast motion, I was thinking – you know, uh, be, to make Megan Rapino happy, they, the Vietnamese should field some men, put some men out there. They were losing, you know, one nothing, then two nothing, and then three nothing. They should, hey, well, here's our new replacement uh, team, and they put five men out there to uh, to run over them. 
and uh, then see what Megan Rapinoe thinks. Listen, Jerry, I like your, you know, I like your thing. It, it, it's, uh, and, and it's true, I, I'm torn because five of the players were being normal. Six of the players were protesting and br- dragging their politics onto the field and the anthem and the anti-Americanism again. And I've had enough of that. I'm, I've had it up to here. I'm holding my hand uh, flat against my forehead uh, with uh, the, the anti-American, anti-anthem, anti-American flag protest by these leftists who are given a platform and they use it to uh, spew their anti-American venom. Um, and I think they should be deported to Cuba or North Korea. Now, maybe send them up to the DMZ. They can walk across like that idiot last week. Um, send them to Vietnam. Send them to Vietnam. Vietnam, you know, South yeah. Vietnam is, uh, is uh, I've been to Vietnam, uh, to the north and the south. Saigon is great. Um, liberals love Hanoi because it's dark and communist. Uh, in, in Saigon, Democrats call Saigon Ho Chi Minh City. And so do the communists. I call it Saigon. And when you go to Saigon, most of the Vietnamese call it Saigon, too. And the storefronts have signs that say Saigon this and Saigon that because they really uh, never gave up to the commies. Uh, but the Democrats have. Now, Jerry, I get your, I get your stance. You know, you're going to root for the five that are uh, pro-American. Are you going to root for America? <clears throat> I'm just aggravated by and I've, I've had enough of the left doing this at every event and politicizing absolutely everything. I've had it. I tell you, I've had it. Know what I mean? I know what you mean. They're trying to destroy everything uh, that we love about America. They want to take a stance against it. That's, yeah. It's just the nonsense. That, yeah. Give them two pennies so they can finally have some sense. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, good stuff. Uh, good call. I appreciate it. Let's go to Mark calling from Reston, Virginia. Marcus, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Uh, Chris, I have to uh, <laughs> politely uh, take the other side of that argument. Uh, I, I'm with you. I've totally had it. There's one thing if somebody who plays professional sports wants to, you know, <laughs> protest against the flag or whatnot, but when you represent the country itself, I just cannot abide people just absolutely disrespecting the country. And he's right. The six players or five players or whomever, mm-hmm. we should be rooting for them. But I have to admit, I'm not rooting for the U S to win the whole thing. I'm, I'm not. And I hate to say that, but I'm with you. I just, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm kind of sick of it. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I think, and, and you, you, uh, crystallized it. I think they're representing the United States. It's not, it's not like an NBA game or an NFL game where you've got adult professional, you know, multi-million dollar athletes that, uh, that are taking a political stand, which I find extremely aggravating too. And, and think that that is, uh, you know, it's the wrong place for that, but you're hundred percent right. They're representing the country. They're representing the United States, America, it's team USA and the, uh, American flag is hanging there and our anthem is playing and they are representing our country overseas in an international competition and for them to be protesting and I mean it's like yeah those Americans you have the right to do that just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean that you ought to be doing it and of course the Democrats don't stand up for our rights where they really matter they just stand up for our rights uh, and appreciate our rights when they use their rights to be anti-American, to attack the United States of America. Um, and, you know, Mark, yeah, you summed it up uh, just right, I think. They're supposed to be representing our nation, not dumping on it. Yeah, and Chris, just if you've ever seen, a, I know you're not a huge soccer guy, but have you ever seen the Italian national team when their national anthem is being played? Oh, my Lord. Every one of them is belting out their national anthem. And my, my mother, God rest her soul, had pointed it out so many times. She's like, look at these Italians. Like, they're just ooze, you know, uh, love for their country when, uh, when their national anthem is going on. But anyway. That is so. great. Well, there's a lot to love about Italy, uh, that's for sure. And I can... Uh, you know, uh, Italy's uh, one of the great countries in the world, and I, you know, and they're and Italians are fun. You know, they're uh, more fun than liberals. That's uh, that's for sure. Self-described liberals who are really, really leftist. 
Uh, Mark, thank you for the uh, thank you for the counterpoint. The counterpoint, uh, Jerry and uh, and Mark on the women's soccer team. Uh, honestly, they have to poison everything from Bud Light to the NFL and the NBA to women's international soccer. And the, the answer is yes. Oh, it's our right to do it. Oh, because America, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Um, you have the right to do it. And I have the right to turn you off. Hey, breaking news. President Biden's plan to introduce a digital dollar is already underway. It's vital to understand the potential consequences Contrary to their claims, as you might expect, this initiative is not going to be in your best interest. Time is of the essence, so taking action now is absolutely necessary to protect yourself, your savings, your retirement, your future. You can help protect your savings from the risk of the digital dollar by diversifying with gold and silver IRAs. Call the experts at American Alternative Assets. Call them today at American Alternative Assets at 888 888- Four gold twenty eight 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 four four six five three six zero. They'll give you all the guidance you need on safeguarding your retirement savings. Say no to Biden's digital dollar. Call today eight 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 four gold twenty eight 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 four four six five three six zero. Call them now. Individual results may vary. There's no guarantee that past performance will be indicative of future results. Seek your own legal, tax, investment, and financial advice before opening an account. Yeah, do they have to poison everything? And, uh, you know, there's this UPS strike looming. And uh, that's a, there are a lot of right-to-work issues there, right-to-work issues going on there. The Democrats are, they're not the party of rights. Got that coming up, too. There's only one Chris Plant. The Chris Plant Show. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Book by this July 31st for extra savings. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. You know, the Democrats uh, in situations like this one, and they have in this situation, so, well, they've got a right. America's great because they've got a right to protest and not put their hands on their hearts to take a knee like Megan Rapino did last time around and, and on and on. I'm like, yeah, they're the party of rights. There was a story today about UPS and the Teamsters and a looming strike and their issues because of right to work states. And, um, and the Democrats don't believe in right to work states. They, they want everything to be controlled by big organizations, unions, and the unions funnel money to the Democrats, and that's why the unions are good, right? They're all for that right, but they're not for a right to life. They don't support your right to free speech, don't support your right to freely practice your religion or your right to raise your children as you see fit. They, of course, don't support your right to bear arms, the Second Amendment. Uh, they're very selective when it comes to which rights they support, but all the anti-American rights they support. This is The Chris Plant Show. Now, uh, not that the Biden family is corrupt or anything, but Hunter Biden is a great artist, and uh, he's not really, but he sells his art for prices that only great artists get. And there are multiple stories on that today. Um, The Washington Times mystery buyer scoops up $875,000 of Hunter Biden's art. $875,000. Coming up on a million dollars of Hunter Biden's art. Hunter Biden's art is proving to be very popular, especially with rich, anonymous buyers. According to Report Monday by Business Insider, a single unknown millionaire purchased 11 of Hunter Biden's paintings for $875,000. The publication cited internal documents from Hunter Biden's gallery. He's got a gallery. All told, Mr. Biden's paintings have netted $1.3 million, the news outlet reported. He's spitting paint through a straw onto 
canvas and saying, you know, look at me, I'm Picasso. I'm Picasso, go to college. Uh, According to Business Insider, the White House has said the younger Mr. Biden, Hunter Biden's art career, could not raise conflict of interest questions because his team used a purchase process that would reveal the bidder's identities only to the art gallery and not to Mr. Biden. However, Business Insider wrote, Hunter Biden did in fact learn the identity of two buyers, according to three people directly familiar with Hunter Biden's own account of his art career. In addition, the publication reported, one of those buyers is a major Democrat Party political insider who was then picked by the Biden White House for a prestigious board appointment. The buyer is Los Angeles real estate investor Elizabeth Hirsch Naftali, whom Business Insider called influential in California Democratic circles and a significant Democratic donor. President Biden appointed Ms. Hirsch Naftali to the Commission for the Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad in July of 2022, eight months after his son's art first started selling. The timing of the purchase, however, is unknown. The administration official told Business Insider that Ms. Hirsch Naftali was an ideal choice for the board and uh, recommended by then House Speaker Nanny Pelosi. Sure, she's a big Democrat Party donor. Millions of dollars. Anti-capitalist. You know, the usual thing. The official noted that the board helps preserve historic Jewish sites across Europe and that Ms. Hirsch Naftali has long worked on Jewish and Israeli issues. They, uh, generally speaking, they're against, uh, you know, Israel, the Democrat Party today. They're not on our side. They're not on Israel's side. Too close an ally, you know. Abby Lowell, Hunter Biden counsel, one of his many lawyers, said his client learned about Ms. Hirsch Naftali and the second buyer after their purchases because they already were his friends. Sure. So that's what's, uh, that's what's going on there. And the New York Post, Hunter Biden sold $1.3 million in art and one buyer was Dem donor friend Joe appointed to prestigious commission. Um, but when you're a Democrat, that's not a problem. That's really not a thing, is it? Also because the uh, Democrat Party is insane and Joe Biden is the head of the Democrat Party. The Washington Free Beacon has the story today. Biden administration gives Soros-backed group, that's George Soros, he's an anti-Semite, George Soros backed group millions of dollars to teach young Puerto Ricans about toxic masculinities, plural, multiple masculinities, self-described feminist nonprofit works to stop violent crime without police. That's what they do. The Biden administration gave two million dollars to a George Soros backed nonprofit, giving tax dollars to he's a multi-billionaire. Uh, he could take his ill-gotten gains and pay for their anti-masculine seminars in Puerto Rico with his own money. Uh, Robert Schmad has the, the story at the Washington Free Beacon. Robert Schmad. The Biden administration gave $2 million U.S. taxpayer dollars, our money, to a George Soros-backed nonprofit to stop violent crime in Puerto Rico by teaching the island's young men about Structural racism and toxic masculinities. Uh, uh, structural racism and to- that's the reason for crime. Uh, structural racism and toxic masculinities, multiple masculinities. President Joe Biden's Justice Department in October awarded the lucrative grant to Taller Salud, a quote, feminist, culturally specific nonprofit organization. It's feminist in Puerto Rico. The money comes from the department's Department of Justice, our money, community-based violence intervention and prevention initiative, which aims to address crime through police alternatives. Seems to be working well in Chicago and San Francisco. Tuller Salud, which received funding from the liberal billionaire George Soros Open Society Foundations, will use the $2 million to further implement its community violence intervention program 
which includes public education campaigns to address, quote, structural racism and toxic masculinities, end quote, among Puerto Rican men between the ages of 15 and 30. See, the Democrats think that you're a man at 15 and a woman at uh, like 13, you know, like Roman Polanski. Democrat Party has lost what's left of uh, its mind, honestly. Far from the first time the Biden administration has used taxpayer dollars to push progressive uh, programs abroad. In May, the U.S. Embassy in Brazil announced plans to bankroll English classes for transgender activists. Sure. In the Middle East, meanwhile, Biden State Department initiated a multi-million dollar effort to teach Iraqis about gender studies. That's uh, sure. You got to and uh, teach the women how to grow good uh, Saddam Hussein-like mustaches, the uh, the Democrat Party. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But all of that is fine. Now, here is a a fun story from the Gateway Pundit that I uh, found this morning um, because I was looking around. And actually, the the story is uh, Jim Hoft from, uh, from Day Before Yesterday. You read it here first, he says. Joe Biden will step down from office after sudden medical emergency. Sure, before weak and feckless Republicans muster up the nerve to impeach him. That's a good, strong headline from uh, Jim Hoft. You may remember Joe Biden. We played the soundbite for you a number of times here before. Joe Biden said long ago that uh, he's kind of anticipating the day that He'll no longer be able to serve as president because he's not up to the task mentally, intellectually, physically. He's not up to it. And he's already explained that he's going to fake something, come up with a fake excuse, lie to everybody, and then sidestep the presidency. Joe Biden. It'll be just like, so far, it's been just like when Barack and I did. If if I reach something where there's a a fundamental disagreement we have based on a moral principle, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll develop some disease and say I have to resign. He'll develop some disease and say that he has to resign. That was December of 2020. He had won the election but not been inaugurated yet, and he explained that he'll fake some disease and he'll have to resign. Now, that's kind of interesting, and I paid attention to that when he said it because it was an extremely bizarre thing to say. But Jim Hoft jumping in at the Washington Free Beak, uh, excuse me, at the uh, Gateway Pundit, I apologize. Uh, on Tuesday, House Oversight Committee released a 14-year timeline of the Biden crime family's influence peddling and selling out America to foreign regimes, including communist China, Jim Hoft writes. The Oversight Committee is likely just scratching the surface of the criminal actions by Joe Biden, his son Hunter, and the extended Biden family. The Biden family was selling out America to Ukraine, Romania, and communist China. There is plenty of proof, he writes. On Wednesday, IRS whistleblower Joseph Ziegler confirmed in sworn testimony to Congress that the Biden family received approximately $17 million in bribes from China, Romania, and other countries in exchange for political favors. On Thursday, Senator Chuck Grassley released the FBI document showing Joe Biden was involved in a $10 million bribery scheme with Burisma CEO uh, Mykola Zlochevsky in Ukraine. The FD-1023 form, a government form, alleged then-Vice President Joe Biden forced Zlochevsky, a Ukrainian oligarch, to pay himself and his son, Hunter Biden, a total of $10 million in exchange for political favor. And uh, that was firing the, getting the prosecutor fired in Ukraine that was investigating uh, corruption, of all things, at Burisma. $5 million to Hunter Biden, $5 million to, to Joe Biden. On Friday, Rudy Giuliani told the War Room audience the evidence collected against the Biden crime family is the strongest case I've ever seen, he said, and greater than the evidence his team had in New York in the 1980s to take down the five mafia families. Now, he writes, Democrats are 
uh, moving to jail President Trump on illegitimate charges in garbage court cases. What uh, are the uh, Republicans doing? Hmm? Huh? Huh? We all know the answer to this, he writes. Now, before Joe Biden is impeached, he will have a slip, a fall, or a medical emergency. His administration will tearfully announce Joe is stepping down from office. Democrats and their lapdog media will uh, then insist the Biden crime family is yesterday's news. They're already doing that, as a matter of fact. And it's already been prosecuted. That's what they're going to say. And uh, Jim Hoft is, is onto them here, uh, I've got to say. The American public will be lectured on what a great leader Joe Biden was and how he should forever be honored with our memories, in our memories and in our history books. And Republican leadership um, and the uniparty members will breathe a sigh of relief that they'll not be forced to go through with impeachment proceedings against Joe Biden. They'll say, that's just not who we are. Now, this is kind of a fun piece in uh, the Gateway Pundit, which is why I wanted to to share it with you. Um, and um, it's from day before yesterday, Jim Hoft at uh, the Gateway Pundit. Fun stuff. And that leads us to our audio because he made mention of, of one of the one of the moments. And that was um, uh, Steve Bannon uh, interviewing Rudolph Giuliani, who is, of course, the U.S. attorney, Manhattan, who took out the mafia, five mafia families, uh, you know, just like in The Godfather. And it was uh, it was an interesting interview. I watched it this morning on uh, Al Gore's amazing internet piece. Be upon him. And let's go to soundbite number two. Uh, soundbite number two. And here is uh, Rudy Giuliani. On uh, this was on Friday doing the interview. Uh, hey, well, what is it? They keep telling us there's not enough evidence to prosecute here, Rudy Giuliani. You prosecuted the mafia in New York. You've looked at the evidence. What do you, and of course, they've smeared and discredited Rudy Giuliani to, to the fullest extent. So now they just spit and dismiss everything he said. But brilliant prosecutor, brilliant mayor, uh, legal mind, legal scholar, Rudy Giuliani on the case that has already been presented to the public against the Biden organized crime family. This is probably the most verified informant information I've ever seen. It's been verified by about. Um, three years of disclosures, including actual testimony that people uh, have seen or can see that's been tape recorded. I mean, Shokin has testified, the guy who was fired, the guy who actually actually, uh, fixed the case, Lusenko has testified. I mean, there's direct testimony. Biden confessed to it when when he was in front of the Atlantic Council. Uh, the hard drive contains at least five texts that would be used as admissions in the trial. Best one being that Hunter tells his, texts his daughter straight out, I've had to give half my income for the last 30 years to Pop. Uh, I, like they say, well, there's no evidence that money went to Pop. Yeah? How about his son says he gave it to him? And I uh, cite that all the time uh, from the laptop, Hunter Biden. Uh, pushing back his daughter, saying, hey, I'm not going to do to you what my father has done to me. He's made me give him half my income all these years because, you know, the deal is I'll give you these fake jobs and then you give me half the cash. Uh, Rudy Giuliani on, uh, on the potential prosecution of Joseph Robinette Biden. This would be the strongest case I've ever seen. That's I've all. never seen a stronger case. It's the strongest case I've ever seen. I've never seen a stronger case. And, of course, the media and the Democrats, but I repeat myself, love to parrot the falsehood. Oh, this is all unverified. It's corroborated up the yin-yang all over the place. You have bank records. You have a uh, money laundering transaction of $3 million that goes to the Bidens. That's just on paper. You don't need a witness for it. I honestly have never seen more evidence than that. And to say that this is not verified is just a lie. It's just a lie to say it's not verified. It's just a lie. And uh, yeah, I've uh, cited the the texts before uh, from Hunter Biden to his daughter complaining that he has to, his father makes him hand over half of his income. Where do you think those big houses come from? A senator's salary? A vice president's salary? Not a chance. And yesterday we learned that the Pittsburgh FBI told 
David Weiss, the U.S. attorney in Delaware, that they had corroborated much of the FBI's seven-year-old document. And Weiss has been sitting on it and sitting on it and doing that and saying, oh, well, we haven't been able to corroborate that. We're lied to so much that uh, we think it's normal. You're listening to The Chris Plant Show. Now let's go to uh, uh, Rudy Giuliani. Again, they've smeared him and slimed him. So it's, oh, you don't have to listen to him. Yeah, he's uh, kind of an expert when it comes to being a prosecutor, U.S. attorney taking down the mafia in New York, that's all. Uh, Margaret Brennan is a Democrat Party activist who hosts a show on CBS uh, called Face the Nation. And uh, she had Chris Christie on day before yesterday on Sunday. And it's like, shouldn't we just put all this Biden stuff behind us? We don't care. We're the news media. We're the front group for uh, the Democrat Party. I wonder, after this plea happens, if you would advise your party to move on. Just move on. Just move, come on, you got to move on. After this, the plea on the, you know, slap on the wrist with the gun charge and some tax things, he's going to pay it off with somebody else's money. And, and then, don't you think your party, the Republican Party, should just move on? Chris Christie. No, I wouldn't, Margaret, and here's why. Um, it's it, The conduct here by the U.S. attorney in Delaware um, and by the Justice Department, it, it just can't be justified. It doesn't take five years, Margaret. I, as you mentioned, I, I was the U.S. attorney in the fifth largest office in the country for seven years during the Bush administration. It does not take five years to, to investigate two misdemeanor tax counts and to dismiss a gun charge. Um, and we need to know what they were investigating and why these are the charges they concluded to. Five years, five years. And now, again, it is the Federalist reporting uh, that the FBI's Pittsburgh field office went years ago to the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office and said that they had confirmed many of the details related to the now seven-year-old FD-1023 form. Uh, Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, Chris Christie. This is not just any person. This is the son of the President of the United States. And while justice needs to be equal, it needs to be equal. And it doesn't appear to me that this is the way to do it. Yeah, if, uh, if justice is going to be equal, it needs to be equal. Uh, even Chris Christie's right about that. So the Federalists uh, cracked the, the case here uh, that uh, even the Delaware David Weiss, U.S. attorney, has uh, he's, you know, he's been lying to us. Oh, we couldn't possibly verify this seven-year-old document or anything in it. Another lie. 